These are self-hiking boots. With this invention, I'm looking to revolutionize the hiking experience. In our modern world, filled with endless conveniences, our current way of hiking is stuck in the past, and I'm looking to change that. I'll be testing three different factors to determine if these boots are successful. One, can they actually support my weight and help me maneuver around different terrain? Two, can we exceed the average walking speed? And three, can they carry me uphill? First, I'm gonna show you how I built them, and then we're gonna hit the trails and find out how they perform. This is a hoverboard, and back in 2015, these were all the rage, at least until they started catching fire everywhere. But just under a decade ago, the self-balancing tech in these seemed ultra-futuristic. So while they're questionable at best as a transportation device, the drive units inside are great for hacking into other DIY projects. And that is exactly what we're doing today. So for our self-hiking boots, I'm thinking, this right here is the perfect driver for a nice set of tank tracks, one on each side of the boot. So what we've gotta do is open this up, remove the drive units, create an interface that lets this wheel drive the tank tracks on our boots, and then everything else should be pretty straightforward. All right, let's get into it. Gotta take this thing apart. So, what we got going through here is just a tunnel for, yeah, I guess there's one battery and multiple control boards. That's interesting. So each of the drive units, each of the motors has these three signal wires here running to this main control board. So that tells me the gyro is in here, the position sensor is in here, but this in here contains the electronic speed controller, which is actually delivering, doing the job of delivering the current from the battery to the motor. So I will have to preserve this in my design of the self-hiking boots. I'm gonna have to take all of this and put it in one package along with the power source. We got this cover off. You can see the inside of the motor, which looks pretty cool. Okay, so now I've got the tires off of these things. It's time to make a ring with gear teeth in it that will interface with these tracks because these motors are gonna drive the tracks on the self-hiking boots. So I've gotta get to my computer, get in my CAD program and uh, get something ready for the 3D printer. Okay, got our drive ring, we got our track. <gasps> oh, ho, ho. that is a perfect fit. That is very satisfying. Up next, I designed and printed some bearing holders along with other non-motorized wheels for the track. I cut some sections of aluminum extrusion to length, measured and assembled the track pieces, and got the rest of my hardware together. I pressed the bearings into the bearing holders and tapped the drive rings onto the motor casing. After a long struggle with the original speed controllers, I decided they weren't going to work. So I cut and spliced each of the motor position sensor wires into a new harness that would interface with a programmable speed controller. This new speed controller can then be controlled by an external input source, such as this servo tester, the blue thing with a dial, or a remote control. Ah, that sounds terrible. This is haunting though. Running detection. Computer plugged into this thing. This thing plugged into these. This wiring done by me. The whole thing is terrifying. My next step was to assemble the physical structure of the boot, which I had cut out of aluminum extrusion. These things are like Legos for adults, and I absolutely love them. Field producer Claire arrived to help film as I was finishing up the first boot. Time to show her what I'd made. All right, can you close your eyes? Yeah. Can you hold out your arms? It's heavy. Okay, I'm ready. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Oh, this is heavy. I think I'm most curious about balance. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> Let's see it. My last step was putting together the second boot so we could take these out for a test run. At this point, I realized I also needed a battery tray, the big gray thing, so I hurried up and printed that off as we were waiting for the rain to slow down. Battery's fit, that's good. Oh, they're heavy. This is like carrying an e-bike heavy. So I'm here with our self-hiking boots. We're gonna put them through a series of tests. We're gonna go uphill, downhill, over a bunch of different terrain. But before that, I gotta stand up on them for the very first time. Okay, moment of truth. Load-bearing test. Oh! <laughs> no crunching noises. That's good. There's a little bit of a learning curve for walking in them. Kind of getting it though. There's like a big swing. You're gonna swing your weight. All right, they're not made for walking in, so time to turn them on. Let's do it. Oh! Oh my God. Oh! They really don't like to go the same speed. Oh! Oh! 
I'm literally heading towards a cliff. Oh! Uh oh, slipping. Got some slippage happening. All right, some problem solving to do. But we did do like 100 feet. <laughs> okay, so looking from the top, this back wheel is kind of out of track a little bit, so I'm gonna adjust it outwards and we're gonna try it again. I don't think I've ever tied my shoes on camera before. Yeah, like I'm gonna screw it up. Everybody's gonna know I'm an idiot. I'm gonna like keep my hands on the controls for a minute once I get moving, try to give it a little more power. Oh God, I need an easier way to apply power. Whoa! Ah! This is so hard. This is so hard. What the heck? Uh oh, track off a little bit. I'm not going the direction at all that I'm supposed to be going. Oh! Uh, yeah, the moss is a bit much. Okay, let's get back to the hard surfaces. Viable product as long as you don't encounter any sticks or moss or grass that's too soft. If I just stay low. Yeah. There we go. Oh! It's like a cross country skiing, you know? The step turn. We're going to the road. Let's go to the road. Woo! Oh no! At this point, I started to question my control system, or lack thereof. Ah! Okay. Whoa. That was exhausting. We had our first catastrophic track failure. I think I need to improve the control mechanism. I think that's my number one problem. I need like, I need hand control. As I waited for Claire to rescue me with my regular shoes, I started thinking about how I could make these boots a bit easier to control. Luckily, I also happen to love radio control cars and have a few kicking around the garage. So I went back into the software for the programmable speed controller and mapped it to work with the radio and transmitter from one of those cars. Oh, that is touchy. I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to mess with that a little bit. I also updated the axle to a piece of threaded rod to allow for better spacing on the wheels and replaced the broken track. With the repairs complete, we headed back out to the woods to continue testing. All right, I'm gonna head down to the start of our course for our top speed test. <laughs> the average walking pace is roughly three miles an hour, which means that's the speed I'll need to beat if I wanna succeed in my goal of creating self-hiking boots that move faster than walking. All right, here we go. Am I getting like a sprinter stance? Oh yeah. We beat it though, 4.8 miles per hour. <laughs> Officially faster than walking. Officially faster than walking. Was that scary? Yeah, I've never felt five miles an hour be that, I, mean, I didn't know five miles an hour could be that thrilling. Luckily I came prepared, as all experienced hikers should, with a giant Rubbermaid container filled with repair equipment. I got a replacement track back on the boot and headed back out. There we go, field track repair. Complete. And I instantly broke the boot again. Uh, oh no, should have hired a track mechanic. For those keeping track at home, this is repair number six. All right, back on flat ground where they really sort of shine. We haven't even done a reverse test yet. Uh oh, I think I just broke a wheel. Ready? Oh, oh man, I broke two wheels. Oh no. Gosh, the track is off. Oh, this is brutal. <sighs> At this point, I was now on my seventh and eighth repair. I had spent more time fixing things in my socks than actually using my hiking boots. Seem to have some sort of malfunction here with our radio. Can't turn it on. So only one boot's working. I guess a uh, course of action, maybe go back to the garage, try to troubleshoot this, swap out the radio. These are the problems you have to deal with when you're uh, on the cutting edge of technology. So yeah, broken radio, doesn't want to turn on. First thing I'm gonna do is check the voltage of the battery. 7.9 volts, so that's good. That's right in the middle of the range we want. 
So it's not a battery issue. This looks pretty complicated to take apart. So I'm gonna say we go with our backup radio. All right, so now I've got a new receiver here in the, in the right boot and it is bound to the radio. But the signals coming from this receiver to the speed controller are different than the other receiver. So I need to plug it into my computer and reprogram the speed controller to work with this radio. Cool, so now everything should work. <laughs> With my ninth repair complete, we headed back out. I'll admit, this is not exactly the ideal hiking experience. It's too bad they don't work that well because they look so, they just look badass sitting there, don't they? As cool as these boots might look, we still have to put them to our ultimate test. Can they take me uphill? <laughs> Off to the next test. Okay, we have a very nice mellow little incline here and I'm uh, gonna check the grade. Uh, <laughs> One degree, minus one degree. Okay, let's get it. Like it's the getting going. Oh, oh yeah, we're going. We're going. Oh, oh Yes! I'm like so amazed they're working at all. Yes, yes! Successfully stopped without falling over. Great, I'm so thrilled. We're ready to, we're ready to sell them to the masses. Oh! Ah! <laughs> okay, maybe not that much. Okay, incline test number two. Gonna try to push it a little further. Right here we've got a, oh, five degrees. We're at one, now we're at five. Or four, five, four, it's going back and forth. All right, we'll give it our best try. Oh God. Uh oh, I'm glad it didn't take off on me. I need a parking brake. Five degrees, let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, we're moving, we're moving, we're moving. Oh, full throttle, baby. Yes, five degrees. Oh, uh oh that's a little bit steeper there. I'm maxed out, full throttle on both. Scooch my way up. That's it. I mean, that, that's that's all we got. That's all we got. Oh, no, no, no. So that's our answer, I guess. Five-ish degrees, maximum slope. You know, kind of like the hiking trail you'd take your grandma on. That's that's where, they, that's where they're gonna max out. <laughs> At this point, I decided to throw caution to the wind and see if I could beat my previous maximum speed record on this downhill section. Okay, GPS locked. Let's go. Dude, that was so lame. I ripped it off. I had to do like a sideways step for balance and I just ripped it off. Time for a one boot test. I think it's appropriate to just end with absolute carnage. Look at that, another broken wheel. Oh, that's it. I'm exhausted. I mean, never has hiking been this good for like burning calories. Yeah. I'm like zone five right now. Is that even a zone? <laughs> I don't even know if that's a zone. <laughs> <laughs> so, in conclusion, considering success versus failure of the self-hiking boots, did we make a product that's going to revolutionize hiking? No, of course not. Stopping is really hard. Also, so is starting and kind of just going. So in that sense, yes, we failed. But if you're a company trying to make a consumer product, failure is what you want to happen as quickly as possible. As far as a prototype goes, I'd say this is pretty great for what we can do within the confines of one episode of this show and a limited budget. All this stuff that's 3D printed would eventually be injection molded, so it would be a lot stronger. The wheels, the tracks, the bearing holders. The motors would be purpose built. You'd have gearboxes. You'd have a much better control system. But as a first try, to have something that actually moved us along, I'd say that's pretty good. So yeah, I'd say we failed successfully. 